for part two, Germany agreeing to stand behind Eurozone government debt in future, and part three, the European Central Bank doing more right now to support countries like Italy. We only had hints of those last two today, but many are now convinced that the ECB will act if governments do their part. On Thursday, ahead of Friday's all-important EU summit, I think... Good morning. Now with Sue Charles. Good morning. Changes over the next couple of days after a mild one yesterday. It's a bright but cold end to the week, breezy with a few showers. A chilly start but mostly fine. Not completely dry though. Cloud and a few showers will spread southeastwards across Wales through the day. The odd sharp shower followed by drier conditions and some sunshine. Quite a brisk westerly wind. Top temperatures between 10 Celsius in Frill and 12 in Swansea. Now a dry night to come. Some early frost in sheltered spots tomorrow. Then it turns cloudier and milder, brighter and breezy on Sunday. There's more news now on BBC Radio Wales and Radio Cymru. I'll be back with our final update of the morning at around 9 o'clock. See you then. Very good morning. You're watching Breakfast with Charlie State and Susanna Reid. Our main story this morning, the government is to spend a billion pounds subsidising low-paid jobs and work placements in an attempt to reduce youth unemployment. The Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, announces a new scheme today called the Youth Contract, which he hopes will lead to work or training for more than 400,000 young people. Well, we asked the Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, if more money would be enough to solve the problem. We're offering a very significant subsidy to employers up to half the basic wage so that if they are sort of thinking about whether they're going to take on a young person, we give them that subsidy. It's much larger than many people have actually been calling for so that young people are actually given jobs which last, which last because they're jobs in the private sector. Nick Legg speaking to us a short time ago. For women having their first child, babies born at home are more likely to suffer a medical complication than those who aren't. But for a second baby, there is no difference in the risk between giving birth at home. Sport is preparing for delays of up to 12 hours at passport control during next Wednesday's strike. Immigration staff have voted to join the walkout by public sector workers in a dispute about changes to pensions. And in the last half hour, there's been a car fire at Heathrow Airport just outside Terminal 3. Traffic can't enter or leave the area at present. If you're intending to fly from there, you should check the Heathrow Airport website for the very latest before you travel. And that will have explained the smoke that we saw a little bit earlier on when we spoke to our correspondent, Rebecca Hardy, about the impact on flights next Wednesday because of the strike. Now, those are the main stories this morning. 8.34. Here's what's coming up later in the programme. Absolute classic brunch. Now, though, now. Mike, you're and putting the world of rugby to rights this morning. Well, I'm <laughs> not the man to do that. Who is? That's the trouble. Uh, here he is, Rob Andrew there. He says it's reached rock bottom, but more stories today. Let me just show you the front, front page, indeed, of The Times here. Uh, the Times is making more allegations, of course, it's got this leaked report. The Times here alleging on the front page that three England players at the Rugby World Cup were lent on by the RFU to pay money to a chain...